Thou camest to our hall of death, O Christ, to breathe our poisoned air, to drink for us the dark despair that strangled our reluctant breath. How beautiful the feet that trod, the road that leads us back to God. How beautiful the feet that ran to bring the great good news to man. O Spirit, who didst once restore thy church, that it might be again the bringer of good news to men. Breathe on thy cloven church once more, and in these gray and latter days there may be those whose life is praised. Each life a high doxology to Father, Son, and unto thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In our brief Old Testament reading, there's one thing that I want to point out in particular. When God says, let us make man in our image, there's a lot going on there. A whole lot going on there. First of all, there's the use of the plural. Let us make man in our image. I've looked at the Hebrew. In fact, that was one of the first ones that they started us with in Hebrew class. And it's rightfully so because theologically, it's extremely important. If we believe in one God, why does the Hebrew say us and our? Well, because predestined from the very beginning of time, our salvation, the creation of the world, our salvation, and the sanctification of the whole Christian church was planned by God Himself. But yet, even though we have the plurals of let us make man in our image, we also have the word image. What does that mean to steal from Luther? What does it mean that God would make us in His image? Does it mean that God has ten fingers and ten toes? A nose? A mouth? Is that what it means in this context? No, image isn't that He looks like us and that we look like Him. It means that His will is our will. And our will is His will. We desire to live the way that Adam and Eve lived. They desired the will of God. It didn't have to be told to them. The only thing that was really told to them as a warning was do not eat from this tree. Otherwise, they lived in complete perfection. And what complete perfection is, is to be in the image of God. However, what happens when we as humans despise that image and we break apart from it because that serpent said in his lying tongue, did God really say, you will not surely die? He just doesn't want you to be divine as He is. He doesn't want you to be like God. He knows that if you eat of this fruit, then you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. You know, in today's society, we treasure knowledge. We go to college, or we go and we learn a trade, which is most times harder than college. We go and we learn a trade, and we think that knowledge is good. We think that knowledge, and it is good, yet, when the knowledge is both good and evil, then we have a real problem. 
And so the image of God was broken away from us. And we were broken away from God's image. We no longer held God's image. And therefore, we became in extreme need at that point. When the image was broken, we became in extreme need. That image had to be refastened onto us lest we burn in hell. You came into this hall of death to breathe our poisoned air, our hymn says. Christ, the second person of the Trinity, would come into the world with image broken, and He would be that image. He would be the one, the Father, or He, he would be the one, both divine and man, fully God and fully man. And then the same feet that we saw in our hymn that brings the good news to man was pierced with a nail. Crucified, died, and was buried. See, good news comes at a price. Good news comes at a cost being paid. And we were ransomed or bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And then in his ascension, in his, in his resurrection, and in his ascension, he spoke, before his ascension, he spoke to his disciples and he said, All authority on heaven and earth. Now notice this the two, the, the, the two natures of Christ, fully God and fully man. And then he says, All authority on heaven, the divinity, and on earth, the humanity, has been given to me. And this is what I will do with it. You will baptize. And you will teach. Justin, you, this, you were, have been baptized. You have been catechized and brought up in the knowledge of the faith. Today you confirmed what you believe in Luther's catechism. But it's in that baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that you became a child of God. And so what we truly know about the Holy Trinity can be summed up in the Great Commission. Mercy, grace, forgiveness. That God Himself would go to no... that would go to every length to make sure that you have salvation. That He would be born the same way that we were all born. And that He would go to the cross and die a death. Not exactly the same death, but a death that we too will die. And so here in the baptismal font, we understand the best that we can the Holy Trinity because in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in that water, it's drilled into our hearts and the Holy Spirit claims us as His own and says, You are Christ. Confess. Believe. You confirm it. See, here's the thing. We have one in our midst, not today, but in our congregation, who is hurting. We're told to honor our father and our mother. And we wonder how to do that when we have to lay them to rest. Lou is certainly on our minds and, and in our hearts. Yet, as I sat by Miss Sitman and I read from the TLH to her, it was in that baptism when I spoke those words in the Apostles' Creed to her, she grabbed my hand. 
And I don't know if she knew who I was, but she knew those words from the TLH that she grew up with. And she grabbed my hand. And here's the cool part. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. She grabbed hold and held. That's what the Holy Spirit does to you. He grabs hold and He says, I will not let go, for you are Mine. Bought at a price, the blood of Jesus Christ Himself. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit given over unto you that you would not die eternally but have everlasting life. And so with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we, ha we share one thing, more than one thing, but one thing in particular, baptism. You never lose your baptism. Heaven and earth, hell or high water, baptism now saves you. And we are baptized in the name of the Most Holy Trinity. And in that baptism, the image of God is no longer broken, but restored based on what Christ did at the cross. It is as if when Christ says it is finished, He said, let us remake man in our image. And so He has for you. And so He has for you. Amen.